Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a little bit of something different in my video for today. This is actually part one of a two part on some of my best holdbacks from 2020. Um, I actually have these out because I'm doing, we're actually uh, developing a new website right now and I needed to take some nice high resolution pictures for the website. So I got out a few of my favorite snakes from 2020 and um, I think you probably have all seen these at one point in a video in the past as when they hatch, but we'll revisit them again and, and uh, take a look at them. And make sure to leave a comment below, uh, let me know which ones are your favorites. So anyway, so all these snakes are being, uh, their pictures are being taken for the new website. Um, I'm not exactly sure when our new site's gonna be up online. Uh, by the way, my website is royalconstrictordesigns.com. The new website, whenever we get it done, which will probably be sometime in 2021, uh, that'll have everything that my current website has on it and hopefully a lot more content. So anyway, let's take a look at some of my favorite holdbacks from 2020. I'll be doing more favorite holdbacks from 2020 uh, in the future, over the probably over the winter. But um, that, I just had these out because these are the ones that I wanted to take uh, pictures of for the video or sorry for the website um, so anyway let's just start taking a look at them okay first one I'm going to show you is one of my favorite Krypton morphs this is a pastel lesser Krypton this one actually may be a cryptic as well uh, instead of a Krypton so it's either got two cryptic genes or one cryptic and one clown gene in it and unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to tell the difference between a cryptic and a krypton yet. I'm not sure if anybody's figured that out yet, but the cryptic slash krypton is one of my favorite new morphs that I'm working with. Um, really just think anything that you can do with a clown, you can do with a krypton, and it just gives it a completely different look. Like this looks nothing like a pastel lesser clown, uh, other than the general color scheme. Pastel is a huge influence on the cryptic and krypton. Really gives them a lot of this blushing along the back, but still maintains the nice high contrast of the pattern. It's one of my favorites. Okay, next one I'm gonna show you. Here's a pastel Mardi Gras. And this is a male and he's 100% heck clown. I bred a pastel Mardi Gras to a uh, pastel yellow belly clown and produce this. So this has got an asphalt gene in it, pastel gene, yellow belly, and enchi. So this will be breeding back into yellow belly clowns to hopefully produce um, freeway clowns and Mardi Gras clowns. But I just really like the way this particular snake turned out with a really nice high contrast and everything. So I decided to uh, put him in the uh, website photo gallery as well. So the next one I have here, this is a dark clown. This is a black pastel GHI clown. really nice and dark. I love what GHI does to clown. I'm hopefully gonna be having a lot of different GHI clown combos coming out over the next couple of years. I got a lot of different projects in the works with them. I also wouldn't mind mixing in some other dark jeans into this too. See if we can get it even darker while still maintaining some pattern. I think it's important with the clown gene to maintain pattern instead of just making it all light and washed out or all super, super dark. You have to have the clown pattern, otherwise why even have the clown gene in there? You can still see some pretty nice pattern on him. Okay, this next one is a pastel calico yellow belly clown. The colors stay really, really intense on these even as they mature. I've got a male that'll be breeding in a few weeks. Um, I'm filming this on, what is it, November 5th. So uh, about a month yet before I start breeding. I usually start pairing in um, early to mid-December. 
so hopefully my male like this who is actually even brighter and more fantastic looking than this one um, he should be breeding uh, right away in December and I'll be doing a lot of different combos with him too so this is the pastel yellow belly calico clown Okay, the next one that I have here is fairly simple, but definitely one of my favorite clowns from this year. This is a yellow belly spot nose clown. Spot nose, of course, has a huge influence on the clown pattern, uh, and the yellow belly does as well. So if you combine them together that's what you get and then of course there's been other genes stacked on top of that too to give an even more dramatic look and I'm going to be stacking a lot more genes onto spot nose and yellow belly clowns in the near future as well I'm trying to figure out some different directions I can go with with it other than what's been done already uh, fortunately I have a lot of different genes in my clown collection so it's just a matter of putting the right ones together in there to get something uh, completely original this is definitely, even though it's a relatively simple combination, just uh, um, you know, two genes plus clown, it's still one of my favorites. It's just one of my, visually one of my favorite clowns from 2020. Okay, another one. This is my pastel banana genetic stripe clown. really like the way this turned out. Uh, the pattern's a little bit washed out because of the pastel and banana interaction, but you can still clearly see a genetic stripe clown pattern through there. It's weird, all the genetic stripe clowns that I've made so far, which there hasn't been many, but they've all had banana in them. So I'm, I'm actually hoping to hit on some non-bananas too. And then it's just a matter of what other genes that I want to add into this, which isn't as easy to do when you're talking a double recessive. I can't just, I mean, I could take like a, say like a GHI clown and breed it to this, but then I'm only going to get GHI pastel banana clowns and, and combos of that, but they're only going to be het genetic stripe and not visual genetic stripes. So then I have to take one of those and breed it back into a genetic stripe clown. So it definitely makes it a lot more difficult to get multiple genes in there. It always takes a couple generations to make that happen. But I think it's gonna be well worth the while to do it. Okay, here's my last one from th for this video. This is a pastel Ultramel clown. I hatched out two of these this year. And then I hatched out a killer Ultramel clown as well. The killer sold and I kept the pair of pastels and definitely one of my favorite clown combos that I've ever done. And this one, again, I wanna add other genes into it to see what, what other kinds of colors and patterns I can pull out of it, but it's hard when you're dealing with the double recessive. So it'll take me a couple generations to get some different genes in this, but I think it'll be definitely well worth it. All right, well, that's it for this video. I'm actually gonna film another one, uh, part two of my uh, snakes that I'm uh, taking pictures of for my new website, and uh, also some of my favorite holdbacks from 2020. So let me know what you think. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment if you'd like, uh, just letting me know which ones you like the best. And I will be back soon with part two. I'll probably be releasing these just a few days away from each other. And also make sure to uh, go to my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com and see what I have available. Lots of snakes up for sale right now. Lots of really, really cool stuff and more coming yet too. I've got a lot of snakes in here that I have, most of these aren't even up on the website yet. So they're coming. And I also have a complete availability list on my website too, which these are all on. So take a look, let me know if you need anything. Email me directly at garrick at crestagecko.com. Crestagecko.com is actually my other website, the, my original one that I built in 1999, I think, and when I was mostly a gecko and lizard breeder. 
Uh, of course, as you guys know, I've transitioned mostly over to ball pythons at this point. I still have a small collection of geckos, but not a whole lot. So, my, but my email say the same, Derek at crestedgecko.com. You can email me at if you're interested in anything that I have uh, on my website. So I will be back soon and hope you guys are having a great day.